All right, it is 5.30. I would like to call to order the May 17th, 2018 City School Committee meeting. And this is a special meeting. Uh, let's oh, give Pedro a second to settle in and then I will move to item two, roll call. Council Member Scott Donahue. Here. Council Member John Bowders. Here. Council Member Diane Martinez. Here. Council Member Ali Medina. Here. Council Member Christian Pack. Here. Board Member uh, Bailey Langer. Here. Uh, Board Member Brenda Collins. I Not believe she's on her way. She's on her way. Okay. Um, we, board we member. We start our meetings at six, so it's possible she got confused. Okay. We'll see. Uh, board member Barbara Inch. Here. Board member Don Merriam. Here. And board member Cruz Vargas. All right, thank you, Pedro. Uh, why don't we move on to item three, public comment. Seeing no public comment, let's move on to item four, approval of the October 5th, 2017 special meeting action minutes. I move approval of the minutes. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, uh, unanimous approval of item four. All right, let's move on to item five, action items. 5.1, election of chairs. I nominate John Bowders as a city representative. I'll second that. Uh, and I'm sorry, did we, uh, is it, is the, does the full board vote on, or, or just the, we I'm think, sorry. We think, we think it probably is most appropriate for just um, each entity to vote in their own per that's, representative. That's how we've done it re previously. Okay. Great. All right, so we have, uh, yes, uh, why don't we call for public comment? Seeing none, all right, so we have a motion and a second, and uh, this is directed at the city council members. Uh, all in favor of electing uh, council member, Mayor Bowders as the co-chair for the city council, aye? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, so it was a unanimous vote by the city council members. I would like to make a motion to appoint Bailey Langner as the co-chair for the school board. Second. Any other, well, it's any public comment? All right, seeing none, uh, any additional comment? All right, all in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Uh, Great. Uh, let's move on to item 5.2 then. And that is discussion of the city school mission and purpose. I believe everybody should have um, a two-sided document which talks about the, starts off with the mission, the proposed mission, the ad hoc committee uh, met. The date right now is uh, I'm not remembering the date, but they did meet and discussed um, to recommend this mission to the committee. And then also on here are what the uh, governance committee, which is the city school committee uh, responsibilities or um, duties along with the district and city responsibilities that you'll see on there. And then what the city council and school district do separately. So. Thank you, Pedro. Um, I guess just a little background on this. I, I'd like to thank Mayor Bowders for, uh, uh, Mayor Bowders, um, Council Member Donahue and Member Vargas for a really productive uh, ad hoc meeting. Uh, and in particular, Mayor Bowders for putting together some great materials, including uh, what is now the proposed 
Emeryville City School Committee mission and a sort of outline of our respective responsibilities. Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, we will move into discussion. I would, I would like to um, echo Member Langner's sentiments and thank Member Vargas and uh, Council Member Donahue as well as uh, Member Langner for working with us. I also want to thank Pedro um, for your work on helping put this together. So in short, the, the mission um, of the proposed city schools committee was reached by discussing the, um, the need, the purpose, the original purpose of the ECCL and the roles that the city and the school district would play together um, in providing broad um, resource support to ensure um, stability and, and success for the facilities and the joint services that we provide here at the ECCL. The proposed, there's four subcategories for item 5.2 and just to kind of overview what we have proposed here for discussion and uh, potential adoption and approval is that there would essentially be um, two meetings a year um, and that the two meetings a year are synced with the obligations in the O&M for us to discuss all the different various budgetary and capital um, requirements that the, the two agencies have together. Um, this was pulled directly from the language in the O&M. It, it is a reflection of what we are contractually obligated to do. And then below that, you will see um, two other categories of district and city responsibilities. And those are duties that each agency um, has pledged in the O&M to the other agency and the ECCL project collectively. And so what we are proposing is that these topics um, are as lined out, kind of outlined here, kind of in, in just a bullet point format, um, but laid out further uh, in a couple places in the rules, um, but not, not this level of detail, that this be the um, scope of work for the committee going forward so that there will be um, a set of standard agenda items with which we will always receive updates from uh, staff and the committee secretary, and Pedro and, and Carolyn and John and, and the respective people in the future in those roles to um, in, inform us of what's going on and that there are, are check-ins essentially on the district and city responsibilities. So we would essentially just have placeholder items on, on all the agendas that match these things where the city would simply report out that it has provided insurance as required you know, for general commercial liability insurance, business and auto insurance. All the obligations that we're supposed to deliver the, at a public meeting, we would be confirming that we have done all the things we're required to do. And so that way we are meeting the minimum legal standards required for us operating. And then separately at the back end of the back of the sheet, um, you will see that there are a set of things that each of us must do um, in our own respective capacities as boards. And so what we would do is prior to those actions that each of us have to take, we would review those items together so that we all have the same information and are on the same page about um, everything related to the budget, replacement reserves, um, and contract approvals that may be required. Um, that way we, we receive the information in one place and we can go back and have agenda items on our own boards to do those things. Um, apart from this, if there are issues or things that are salient to the ECCL and its mission, that are not covered by the O&M and these outlined items, those items could be uh, brought forward at a, for a future agenda item under a agreement to have a discretionary set of items be reviewed, uh, but that would require approval of um, uh, an ad, through an ad hoc committee, which I think we're gonna get to in a second. So I thought maybe um, the rules are attached in that page, those nine pages of things, we just basically clean them up to reflect what I just said. So you'll see uh, first that we changed the dates to a May and November meeting. You'll see that, uh, that the quorum and that the, we, we've added clarification language to make it clear what constitutes a quorum to do business here. Um, we have cleaned up a couple spots where there was language outstanding. We have also proposed the uh, regular meetings to be here, which wasn't previously in the, in the, the rules. We have created a proposed agenda, which you'll see under Rule 4.1, and that agenda essentially matches the, the um, items I just went over. 
And then you'll see in the agenda preparation, um, there's language here about ad hoc committee, and I'm gonna just flip ahead just to make sure there's no other big items to talk about in this packet. Uh, we removed um, some of the stuff at the end and cleaned it up to put it in where it belonged. But essentially the, big, the meat of the discussion for this evening I would propose to everyone on this committee is around ag agenda preparation, so rule 4.2. Um, but before that, I just wanted to outline that, thank the, everyone who participated in these conversations for getting these items forward to this point. And if there are questions on 5.2 A, A or B, um, maybe we could take those now, otherwise we could move to discussing um, C and D. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank the ad hoc committee for doing a deep dive into this so we can really set things in order. Um, going to the mission um, document, I see under district responsibilities we have janitorial maintenance and repair. And I understand that's a district responsibility, but um, I just wanted to signal at least from my point of view, um, I think that the city should be a partner in uh, helping the district keep up the standards that we adhere to you know for our, our city facilities so i know it's a personal interest of mine to, in uh, the waste stream and in um, uh, litter so nothing to be done at this moment but i just wanted to say at least personally and i, I can get buy-in from um, city council separately that i'm i'm very interested in uh, proactively partnering with the school board um, on keeping this a beautiful campus. Um, I have a comment under 5.2B uh, in terms of the rules of procedure for meeting frequency and location. Actually, can I, I something separate in the bylaws, is that gonna go under a separate section here? Or can I bring that up now? Can you use the mic and which item? Um, I'd like to bring up 2.14 under the rules. Is that is now an okay yeah. time to do that? Great. Um, I like the streamlining of it to the presiding officer, sir, shall maintain order. Um, I think it needs a and confined debate to the item under discussion. Um, but I would move to eliminate the uh, last clause and discourage demonstrations for the Emeryville City Schools Committee, such as applauding or booing. I find that to be uh, unnecessary and maybe out of the scope of how we limit public comment. Any other opinions on uh, Council Member Medina's point? I'm supportive of the request. We, we did that at City Hall. We had a rule that looked just like this that said that members of the public could not make personal attacks or statements against council members or staff during meetings. And uh, when we cleaned up our rules at City Council in December, we struck all that. The, um, the ACLU is engaged in a lawsuit with a school board in Kansas um, for such a clause as a violation of free speech at meetings. So I think Member Medina is probably hearkening back to that conversation we had um, and so I, I would be supportive of the request to add the word and before confine, remove the comma, and then strike um, everything after the comma behind the word discussion, because I think it's actually probably unconstitutional. I would support that as well. As would I. Councilmember Medina, was that the, the, the end of your comments? Of my comments? Thank you. Any other comments? Um, Member Langer, I have uh, two. One thing is it was busy wordsmithing. The term janitorial, uh, could that be could, can, uh, changed to custodial? And then secondly, the last line pertaining to approved contracts over $25,000. I know in public contracting, uh, there may be an inflationary uh, uh, factor into that. Is it a static 25,000 or is it uh, adjusted per annum for uh, inflationary uh, concerns? Um, 
Uh, I think the question for our staff is, doesn't the O&M actually spell out $25,000 as the straight amount? It just I says 25. It just calls it that. I think that's just contractually what we have. Is a, it literally says approved contracts over 25,000, and I think it just means any dollar amount when the, when the check itself would be for, in the end, the sum would be for over 25,000. I think that would require that both of these agencies approve that independently, correct? I believe that's correct. I'm gonna try to look for it if I can, but I believe that is correct. Yeah, and I don't think there's any objection to using the word custodial. I think we literally lifted janitorial from the O&M. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, also, Page five, item five, shall strive to. Maybe my vocab's limited, but I think it's strive. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Yep. Which number? Uh, Page we'll, five, number five. Yeah, 4.2, subparagraph five. Yes. Any other comments, questions? Well, before we do that, I think we need to talk about item 4.2, and I think Member Pat's had a comment. I have a couple of things. So I'm just looking at the mission and 4.1, I, other than the requirement from the JOA, I'm not sure, this is informational stuff, and then for the budget, we have to go back to our own body and approve it. So this is an awful lot of people and time and money in this room right now. And so I, you know, given this limited agenda, I question the need to even meet twice a year. It seems like something that can be done in an email and a vote. So that's my first comment um, and my primary comment, actually. But uh, there was a bunch of struck uh, that was the, uh, yeah, I don't really care about the last part. Never mind. So that was it. That's my big comment is I don't know, given the narrow focus and the small scope of the agenda, I don't even see the purpose to meet twice a year. That's my big comment. Uh, There's nothing covered. So if I may respond. So uh, it's a very well made point and we discussed the frequency. We, we started at four and went down to two. Um, and, and I think the rationale for two was a couple things. One is that there is a requirement that we review the O&M budget annually and at mid-year, and that we are obligated legally to review it at a public meeting. Right. So we can't not review it less than twice a year at a public meeting. Right, but this isn't, if, if I understand this, it makes it happen twice, right? Because we have to approve it, I mean, it makes it three times, basically, we have to, uh, review it once and then also approve it. We approve it at our own boards. So we would get the information here in May and then each of us would vote at city council and at the school board on the actual budget in our own capacity at our June meetings on our own agendas. Right, that's why I'm saying again, because we have that duplicity, why even do it here? Because we're actually, this committee, so the, the whole scope of the governance committee, it requires that the city and the school meet together to do it. We have to do it twice a year. Right. We can't meet independently to your point we can't meet independently we so have we're to just meet doing it to meet the contract we have to meet this is meeting the contractual obligations and so and amending the contract we would have to amend the whole thing yes okay thank you yes and so it, to your point though it could be a very quick meeting at the mid-year So the one item that we really need to discuss is 4.2, I think, um, and this is about the future of, it's listed on the agenda as two things. The, we talked about the agenda order and preparation. I'm, I'm hearing a few uh, Scrivener's changes and a couple of language changes, but otherwise it sounds like that people were agreeable. But on D, the ad hoc committee status, this is the one that um, you'll see there are two options in the current draft, um, and we need to select those or a different option if necessary. So there, the ad hoc committee, if it was to be permanently set to meet, would technically constitute a standing committee. And if we had a standing committee, the Brown Act would require that we notice the standing committee meetings on their own, um, hold a public meeting to agenda and discuss anything the ad hoc committee might meet. And the only reasons the ad hoc committee is intended to meet right now are essentially to talk about those items that are not in the agenda for the standard items 
to allow for things that people are discretionarily asking to be considered, which might be a joint in interest, but are not under the O&M. And we thought that there should be a space held to allow us to discuss those things. So we're proposing that we could select an ad hoc committee that does not, that only meets as necessary and is just designated in advance if there is a request. The, is the, the issue became, um, after getting, we, we'd kind of discussed in the original intent of the work group was that there'd be two board members and two council members who would agree to meet with the superintendent and the city manager and the committee secretary to discuss an item that was requested. There was some consultation with attorneys before this draft was put out to everybody where there was a concern that the Brown Act might um, prevent us from being able to have this meeting with two and two because if uh, council members A and B were on the committee and council member C had spoken to council member A about the item already and then it was presented for discussion at the ad hoc committee, that could have result in a serial meeting or an intermediary. Um, so one of the suggestions was to um, either require all requests to be sent directly through the city manager and the superintendent, or alternatively to also, with that, reduce the ad hoc committee to one member each, which in theory could just be the co-chairs, to one member each so that there's a lower risk of there being a violation of the Brown Act, so that if members have discussed one reason or another not thinking that it might end up on this committee agenda, but let's say a school committee or a city committee of some kind has discussed it, um, that there's not a risk of putting people in that situation. So the question is kind of twofold is one, are people accept, uh, open to and okay with the ad hoc committee as committee essentially not being a formal committee, only meeting if necessary and only at the time in which there's a request for a discretionary item. And then the secondary and tertiary questions are, are members okay with it being two people from each board, one person from each board, and do we want requests to only go through the administrative heads of both agencies as opposed to the members of the committee? Yes. I think for uh, ease of functioning and given that the school districts are legally separated in California from councils, that better to do the ad hoc committee as one each. That way we just won't get into trouble. The relative bodies can go back and vote on how to proceed separately and it would just be simple, but we'd still have this communication method between our bodies as an ad hoc committee. Um, uh, chair and co-chair. Um, the, uh, the advice that we got from our uh, city attorney is that once this, these documents are approved, whether it's this evening or sometime in the future, uh, that the ad hoc committee would be dissolved by this committee. Then if there was to be representatives, or um, whether it's two and two or one and one, with one and one being um, easier to administer and avoid the issues of the Brown Act, it would, they would be appointed as a subcommittee, which would be standing, and that the subcommittee could be called upon to assemble whenever there was a question about adding an item to the agenda. Um, however, it would be subject to, even the one-on-one -on -one would be subject to the Brown Act and in order to discuss whether or not to add something to the agenda, the subcommittee would have to meet as a Brown Act uh, meeting and would be subject to posting. It would be open to the public, uh, minutes taken, so on and so forth. I believe this would be extremely rare, but yes, a subcommittee is subject to the Brown Act and so it would have, just to discuss the agenda, you'd have to agendize a meeting. So that's why uh, an alternative would be, well, uh, there are alternatives, but I uh, just wanted to put that. The, and I'll, well. No, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought she was wrapping up. Um, can I make a radical change to both the rules and this whole ad hoc committee? that I think would resolve this kind of easily uh, and save us time at the meetings. Instead of electing a chair, co-chairs, 
why don't we just default it to uh, the mayor or her designee and the board president or her designee, and then they set the agenda together. So it's not a committee, they're doing it in their capacity as the chairs in conjunction with the, I think it's the administrative committee, or the executive, I don't know, the, the you two. So it's kind of reframing it. I, I don't think we discussed that notion with yeah. the city attorney and. And it just eliminates the election. It eliminates from having to set up an ad hoc committee. Yeah. It is determined in public who that's going to be because it's. I think it would still be a subcommittee, however, uh, we'd be happy to check with our city attorney, but I think the chair and co-chair, in essence, would, uh, because normally the duties would be to preside at these meetings, um, that it would still be a subcommittee, and, and the, on the rare occasion when um, a, an agenda was being requested to be added to the agenda, that uh, we would need to um, assemble that meeting as a Brown Act meeting. A, a point of clarification. So b before we even entered into this discussion, um, you know, a year ago, uh, Council Member Donahue and I, w you know, we, we, I guess, had a phone call to discuss setting agenda items. And, I, you know, I d it, it seemed to me that we didn't have to notice that a as a meeting. It was just the, the two, the two co-chairs uh, coming together to set the agenda, which it, my understanding is sort of the standard practice. Sure. I think the issue becomes uh, that's a fine practice. The issue will come up, uh, I think, uh, if the body takes a vote to put a subcommittee in place that is a stand, excuse me, that is a standing committee that meets regularly and is enacted by a vote of this body. If that doesn't happen, and we don't have an issue. I want to propose a hybrid then of, because I agree with uh, Member Langner and I agree with you to a degree, um, which is, which is great for us, agree. right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, so I want, to, I want to propose what you're saying, I think, but with one modification, that rather than have the chairs default to being the presiding officers of the respective bodies, because um, I, I think you know, I, I was prepared to actually suggest someone else this evening because I don't know that every chair of a body needs to chair this committee as well. What if we just simply said that the co-chairs shall prepare the agenda, including and have and, and meet and consult in cons and prepare the regular agenda that's under 4.1, and that in in um, determining whether there any or should be any other discretionary items shall do so in consultation with the school superintendent and the city manager. Um, and all requests for items not covered by 4.1 um, from members of the committee shall be directed to the administrators. That way, there is no serial meetings happening with the co-chairs. All requests go through an administrator and that when we meet to have the agenda planned, it's, it's a simple, did you get, you know, John and Carolyn, did you get a request and if, for anything discretionary? And if they did not get one, then the co-chairs do not have to even participate in setting the agenda. And if they did, then they simply decide whether to put it on. Because I do, I do not think, I agree with her, Carolyn, I do not think that two people um, providing input as co-chairs on, uh, on an agenda, cities, cities have a mayor set the agenda all the time and do that stuff. And although that's not more than one person, I understand that. Um, I don't think that two people um, setting, that setting the agenda is a Brown Act issue personally. But if you think it is. And well, it, it, it all goes to this, uh, our, just our discussion with the city attorney. And I, we should just double check with so. that. And in the meantime, I don't think there's anything wrong with going ahead as you're suggesting, because we'll have plenty of time in between meetings to resolve it. Yeah. Remember Pat? So that was what I was gonna say is, you know, we, we're meeting twice a year, and I, I just want to go back to my designating the chairs for one simple reason. We meet twice a year, and we're going to meet at 50% of our meetings, we're going to be holding elections with a permanent chair. Just seems to me to be <laughs> I excessive. So. Right, there is, a, there is a rule in here that allows us to call a special meeting if something urgent came up. Like, so if we were going to be waiting till November to meet and say there was um, an earthquake and damage happened to the building, we could potentially meet you know, and call a meeting. So there are provisions that allow us to call a meeting if we need to. 
it's also on a regular meeting there could be a discussion for a future agenda item that the yes. committee could approve for I, I get your point though I get I, your point you don't want to but the election of a chair is, is all of two minutes and so I, I'm hoping that you'll forgive us if we do that uh, I'm throwing it out there, and I've spent way more time trying to save time than we're actually going to save. So <laughs> I'm, I'm beyond out on this conversation. Okay. How do other people feel about the proposal? Uh, my understanding. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. M member, Council Member Medina? I'd be in support. Uh, one other point. I believe we can also call special meetings for discretionary items as well. So that's another. We, we may, you know, in the future have more than two meetings a year for that purpose. Any other comments or questions? Um, just because it's going to come up later, under district responsibilities, it says carry commercial liability insurance. Um, how do we operationalize the word carry? Does that mean they have to have it, or is that something that means it's their expense? It is their expense. Yeah, these, these are all captured. That's a good question. These are all captured as what individual responsibilities, and so they have to acquire, purchase, maintain, and keep, mm -hmm. or carry is the word we use, yeah. Yeah, I, just, I didn't know the word carry yeah. seemed ambiguous. Just like we have to for all the general liability right. business and auto, yeah. Yeah, because yep. it's a line item later on. That's why I was curious. Okay. So. Um, if, that's, if there's no one else wishing to discuss, I want to make a motion to move this along. Um, on the proposed Emeryville City School document, which I believe we're going to put on the website around this and have this in a recorded, I'd like to amend the word janitorial to custodial. On the rules in the motion, uh, motion to approve the rules with the following changes. On item 2.14, the rule, add the word and after the word order, remove the comma before the word confine, and then strike everything beginning at the comma after the word discussion through the end of the sentence, inserting a period. In item, uh, or sorry, rule 4.2, subparagraph 5, strike the word shrive and change it to strive. And then as it relates to agenda preparation 4.2, sub paragraph one, um, the way I would propose is that where the word options begins that we simply strike all the, the language that's in there as red line and um, we can either do one of two things. Uh, we can either put placeholder language or we can actually attempt to write a brief paragraph. What would people like to do? So we can just vote this thing and be done. I think we should write a brief paragraph at this time. Okay. Um, how about if it says, all agenda requests will be submitted as requests to the staff, period. Without discussion of the substance of any agenda item and without discussion of the position of any member, one council member and one board member what do you say, the, pres the presiding officers? That's a better choice, yeah. Uh, without discussion of the position of any member, the presiding officers of the committee will agree or not agree to place an agenda item for an upcoming meter meeting of the larger whole committee that is of a discretionary nature because we have the standing ones, right? Or, or it can say, or, or, um, agenda item for the upcoming meeting that is not an agenda item included under Rule 4.1? I, I would recommend, so the discretionary, I think it would help if we, at the, the outset of the paragraph you proposed, uh, you said all agenda requests. I think we should say all discretionary agenda requests, mm -hmm. and then we'd, we won't need we to remove that issue altogether. clarify it at I the end. I accept that amendment. Um, May, yes. I, may I make another friendly amendment? Yes. I just see a few instances of the word agendized um, to be there, uh, missing a D, uh, the oh, first yeah. D. So there's some typos. So with that, with that correction in every instance of um, the misspelling of agendized. Yeah. So we'll add. So I think we're going to take basically um, paragraph one. And we're simply going to say all discretionary agenda requests will be submitted as requests to the staff without discussion of the substance of any 
discretionary agenda item and without discussion of the positions of any member, the presiding officers will agree or not agree to place a requested agenda item for an upcoming meeting of the larger whole committee on the agenda. Agendized items require unanimous agreement for agenda placement by the presiding officers. Also, Mr. Mayor, the other thing that we were suggesting is because uh, in order to avoid any misunderstanding and spending a lot of time on items that don't strictly uh, fit within the mission and scope of this committee, that that language be the basis for determining uh, whether a discretionary item should be considered because if it is not within the scope and mission that 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 was a kind of a basic following. premise of, of what we were trying to avoid in the future is to going down the path of adding agenda items to this committee that are not within the scope of the committee. If that, if that could just be preserved or included I as. I think unanimous would, would address that issue. You're, you're, you're asking about how do we make sure that items that are not within the scope of the committee not be placed on the agenda? Correct. Okay, so then we could. Um, Pedro, Pedro, I'm sorry, Pedro was, I think we had that language in here somewhere. I, we we do, it's right above it. It's the red line right above it. Agenda items okay. must be confined to and consistent with the committee mission and purpose. Right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm proposing paragraph one of 4.2, the agenda items may be requested to blah, blah, blah. That little sentence, agenda items must be confined. And then um, yes. I would strike the word options, strike this ad hoc committee thinks yes. we're not calling it an ad hoc committee. I would remove the number one and I would just have it say all ag discretionary agenda across that paragraph I just created. I would um, simply have that. There's a paragraph here below it that talks about um, a request can be made during a meeting to place an item on a future agenda if the committee doesn't agree. Do we feel the need to do that? I don't feel the need to do that, no. So I would like to end my, my motion by ending it where I did with agenda placement and then strike the rest of everything that's in the current red line format and approve these rules with that motion. I agree with that. Any other comments or questions? So I'm looking at... Uh, yeah, Member Collins. I'm looking at uh, the same paragraph. It looks like it would be... Uh, two, four. Are we talking about one officer or are we talking about two? The city manager and school superintendent in consultation with the presiding officer or should it be officers? Oh, there is an S You're right. There's an S missing. I think I saw that. Where are we looking? But I don't remember where it is. Uh, I do recall seeing that. Where, where are you looking? I'm sorry, Member Collins. Page five. Page five, number four. Number four. Yeah, there should be an S after the word officer. So my amendment includes the addition of the letter S after the officers. Thank you, Member Collins. Is there a second to the motion? Second. All right, uh, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Uh, thank you. That's a unanimous approval of uh, item, where's my agenda, five as uh, discussed and amended. All right. We will now move on to item 5.3, review and approval of o and budget slash mid-year adjustment and capital program. Madam Chair, um, if before you go on to there, if you consider 5.2, D, ad hoc committee status. If the, this document is approved, the ad hoc committee should be um, dissolved. I move to dissolve the ad hoc committee. I second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. 
All right, so uh, 5.3, review and approval of o and budget, mid-year adjustments and capital program. Come on up, Dora. We have Dora Sue here with us this evening. Dora Sue, thanks for being here. Hi, good evening. My name is Dora Su. I'm the uh, fiscal director at uh, Emory Unified School District. And I'm sure you guys, uh, each of you should have a spreadsheet in front of you. And the two columns that we have to pay attention to is the last two columns. The second uh, last column, it's giving you the estimated actuals as of June 30th, 2018. As you can see, the numbers are really uh, close to what we discussed in the second interim uh, budget. And the last column is the preliminary budget numbers for next year, fiscal year 18-19. And I'm available for any questions that you guys have. Uh, why don't we start with any public comment? All right, seeing none, uh, any questions? Uh, for Ms. Dorisu. Dorisu, if I may, would you just let the uh, both councils, the council and the, uh, the uh, school board know, is there anything dramatically different, just to, so we can bring it to their attention, uh, if, if there is anything different than what we expected uh, and from last time that they saw the budget? Well, uh, the seventeen eighteen working budget is close to $1.299 $1 million. And for next year, is about 1.243. And most of the reason for the increase, as you know, uh, we are going to face with more increase on the retirement, the pension costs. And also, uh, the classified, uh, not the classified salaries, but the management salaries are getting a 1.5% on schedule starting July 1st, 2018. So there's some portion of salaries and the custodians that come out of this budget, but that's the only significant change? The CSEA, we haven't settled yet. So okay. that means right now the budget is days at what actually happening this year in next year. Thank you. I have a couple of questions, Dora. Thanks for the um, report. So. I want to ask about the revenues. So the original budget um, anticipated general fund contributions of s about $770,000. And now we, we've cut that by about $100,000, while at the same time, um, we, we also cut the total amount of revenues that we expected from the city share down, but that's offset by the third party rental. So I'm just trying to figure out um, figure out here this this hundred I'm sorry the third party rental was originally only going to be 130,000 so the general fund contributions are basically designed to be paid only to offset third party rentals that's right okay actually that third party rental I've been getting that number from Petro so yeah. we uh it was a projection estimate based on we only had one year to project off last year we had 159,000 so um you know uh we projected this uh, I think in the previous year, we projected 130 that we could feel comfortable with, and things have gotten a lot better than we anticipated with rentals, and so they continue to to do well um, at this point in time. Okay, so is the and then in the expenditures, the only change I see that's material is um, between other classified salaries. We originally budgeted 25,000 for that, and it zeroed out in the rest of the um interims and the actuals at the end and then i noticed at the bottom contracted services is increased by about thirty thousand mm -hmm. and so is it because we did not we did not fill an intended an intended classified salary position and we used a contract worker instead how did that happen okay what happened is on the question regarding the other classified person uh right now that person is really sitting with the district budget, not the o &M budget. So that's the reason why you don't see it anymore in the o &M budget. And then the second part regarding the questions on the contractor services, it really go by the POs that set up or encumbered in the system by the o &M, 
on contracted services that they outsource. I believe, Petro, maybe you can speak more to it because it really is an operating working budget based on the PO that's set up by our director of maintenance and also as per request from the city side too. Yeah, I believe uh, the reason for this increase is actually um, the added wire mesh that you see at some of the gates because it was easy for people to enter in. So that was about a $20,000 uh, fix to do that we added. And we added that as contracted services as a line item? I believe it was a vendor that was a contractor. Okay, so that included, the contracted services included the materials, because my last question is about repairs, and we have budgeted, um, the original budget was literally at $1,200 for repairs, and we've already adjusted that to about 13000 So I was going to ask what repairs, we have over $10,000 difference in repairs already, so I'm just trying to figure out why we have 10000 change in repairs. I want to say we've had a lot of uh, lock and card reader issues. Um, so a lot of it lock and what was the second thing? Card readers. Thank you. Yes, I believe. Um, so, is it some of it? Let me just ask. There were also some issues with some of the irrigation uh, sprinkler equipment. I don't know what we called it. Uh, and then we had some holes recurring in the gymnasium that we had to have plastered and fixed. We've added wall padding recently out of the construction budget to stop that. So, I, and then we had a uh, page of last year or, or this last fiscal year, we had a restroom issue where I think the, the toilet and some of the pipes was damaged. And, and so I, I don't know if any of that is contributing to this, but, but I just, those I, are, I'm actually, working from memory. I got a detailed budget report. It's telling me when I'm looking at it right now, I can share that with you right now. Uh, it said uh, plumbing repairs and also it said uh, repairing the drywall. So, may so the, I so the gym, yes, if I, I'd love to okay. see it. So the gymnasium and the um, bathroom item Dr. Rubio mentioned are seem to be the items. Which, which is section down here? Okay, so we have four thousand dollars to Pan Pacific Mechanical for maintenance plumbing repairs on August fifth, and then on uh, October eleventh, Roto Rooter three thousand dollars for repairs. <coughs> And then uh, again on November 1st, Roto Rooter. Again on December 8th, Roto Rooter. And then we had electrical repairs on January 18th for $2,000. What was that item? Was that the science room, the plugs in the ceiling? I actually, I would have to dig in more to, to be able to tell you. I'm not sure offhand. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, so then essentially the issue just becomes it looks like most of the repairs after that are all plumbing. So I just want to raise a question is, do we have an ongoing issue with plumbing that we need to deal with? There's like 12 entry items for rotor router for plumbing. Well, I, I do recall the restroom issue, but outside of that, I know that we had an issue regarding some water building up, and Pedro, I'm not sure if I recall the area, building up near the, some of the electrical, I don't know what we call this area out here that's fenced in, that where we were trying to determine if uh, and maybe it was Roto Rooter was helping us with that. I'm not sure offhand without Ron here, but uh, it could be that they were investigating to see if they could determine where the leak was coming from, or it was at the pool area. No, was, I don't uh, recall. I think if I recall correctly, actually, we were having some vandalism issues, really, I guess, of um, students jumping on the toilets. Can you use the microphone? I can have our time. Sorry, vandalism issues, like students jumping on the toilets and having to do repairs to. Like toilets breaking the toilet. Are the breaking. toilets floor mounted or wall mounted? wall mounted was causing pipe damage also and then opening up the wall and fixing that so those okay. have been kind of things that have kind of come up that have been repairs i don't think it's anything on workmanship it's more of kind of wear and tear and abuse i guess mm -hmm. is there a is there a repair that can be made that can make the toilets more resistant to students jumping on them that would save us ten thousand dollars a year i'm not aware of anything right now myself <laughs> I'm just wondering if we need to invest in a wall-mounted or floor-mounted toilet because $10,000 a year on toilets yeah. is not a good practice. Right. So I just want to raise that. Well, and the, the, I agree. I just don't know that if it's all. I, I don't know that it's all that. That that's the entire sure. am, amount of it. So I, I'd have to dig in. So I, I agree with you. I also just with with just for additional information, the restrooms are used and open from morning to night on the weekends when we have a lot of people coming out. So I, I don't know that we, we're, we weren't able to ascertain, Pedro, if it was a student or an adult or someone changed. No, we don't, we don't know what happened, but it is true. We believe somebody stood on it and unfortunately the piping in the wall started to, to protrude coming out. Okay. Council, Councilmember Martinez. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead if we 
Councilmember Pat. I'm sorry, was the toilet in the gym or upstairs here is where I thought it was? I'm sorry, I don't mind being left. I just want to know how we're going to talk about the toilets. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the uh, outside <laughs> restrooms, I believe, out here. Uh, uh, the, the outside ones, Member The one Pat. on the second floor. No, I'm sorry, outside here by the soccer field, back on the okay. back side of the pool area. And so those are left open on the weekends? Uh, all, all mornings and evening, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I just wanted to know if this budget um, contemplates uh, any. I'm anticipating there's going to be some repair to this inner courtyard turf area. Yeah. So I'm wondering if it's in here. If not, so, what you can tell us about that? That's a great question. Um, I'm working on having that improved uh, using some of our construction bond money. So we're, we're going to go ahead and uh, have that all taken care of. Thank yeah, you. Chef, not in here. So not to go back, but and I don't have the itemized list. But I'm not seeing a $30,000 difference. I'm seeing an $80,000 between contracted services projected and actually expended. And so if we take off 10 for plumbing, another couple for electrical, and uh, another couple for drywall, I'm still missing about 65000 Oh, so I, I think, and you're right, I, I misspoke on the amount. But I think that the uh, several lines above it, the $10,000 i am referring to is the twelve sixty dollars to the 12849 and that's the physical repairs, but okay. I, yeah, I agree with you that there is a $80,000 shift to contracted services that weren't originally contracted, um, and that there was a removal of um, other classified salaries off the entire list, and that those don't balance out, obviously, 25 versus 80 do not add up. There are three to $5,000 changes elsewhere in the budget, especially network and internet, we are spending 40000 less than that. So I think the majority of the difference is located there. Um, so I'm not sure if the contracted services, it sounds like, Dory, you're saying that those are people who were brought in to do their, their contract people to do the maintenance. But it, the actual physical repair of the materials is probably under repairs. Is that yes. your understanding? The repairs is under repairs. But the 5830, which is the contracted services, which is like the um, maintenance agreement, uh, something that we outsource for somebody to come in to provide services at this location. Right. So when it says $2,000 for Roto-Rooter, it's this, the cost you paid in the contracted service to have Roto-Rooter come and make a repair to the toilet. And they will be under repairs not contracted services. So what's, so to member Pat's question then, what is the contracted services? Um, um, may I come elevator, over? Yeah. Elevator contracts, um, there's actually power washing also that they've been added. Power washing is one of the big ones actually that recently got added. Um, you do it three times a year and I think it's about a $15,000 cost for that. We're paying 45K to power wash? No, 15. Oh. A total, sorry. You said three times 15. So. Oh, three times a year, total 15. <laughs> what, what are we power washing the walls? And no, the, um, all the outside, Thank you. kind of the uh, landscape, I mean, not the landscape, but the hardscape areas. Mm -hmm. We're not able to do that internally? Uh, I don't think we're, we have the capacities here, in my opinion, <laughs> as from the city. I mean, we only have three and a half janitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. The, the thought, Member Pats, and I don't know that, uh, how much of it that I think Ms. Uh, Pedro said it was 15000 is that having that done three times a year when the kids aren't here, uh, it improves the look of the facility, it improves the cleanliness of it, and actually they don't just do the power washing, they actually do all the windows and they climb up and do the exterior windows as well. So we don't have all that kind of equipment. The windows make sense, the power yeah. washing. Yes. Yeah. Straightforward. And also services, we're talking about those uh, crossing guards that we hire to do. That's do just what I was going to mention is yeah. I, I got the list here, Member Pats, and uh, we have 30,000 plus for crossing guards. There it is. That's a, that one is large. And then we have 34,000 for HVAC maintenance. And we have 19,500 to Baywide services for pressure washing. We have 10,000 to convergent technologies for alarm monitoring. Specific site management is 8,000 for landscaping. Rotor routers on here several times. And then Rex lock and safe for lock repairs, it's $3,200. 
Mr. Chair, can you repeat the number for HVAC? Maintenance? HVAC, um, the HVAC maintenance, the company providing it is named Therma and it's $33,507. May, may I ask staff if that's an ongoing cost that we anticipate seeing or if that's a more That's, a, that's a great question. I believe that one may have been higher than what we would expect to see because uh, I don't recall the timing of the fires that were north of us, mm -hmm. but we uh, uh, took the direction to have them come and replace all the filters throughout the building and we had someone with asthma who was having trouble and so it seemed like the right thing to do and but it did increase our cost but I don't think they're going to continue at the same level Thank you. yeah I just want to ask questions about a couple more items on this is we have uh, $5,200 to refinish and repair the gym floor something happened to the gym floor or is that no, just a standard it's update maintenance. it's an annual maintenance okay of the floor. and then um, ACOE Alameda County Office of Education is that what that is on the menu if it says ACOE? That handles all, that's our pipeline to the internet. Okay. Our, our fiber. okay, so after our support, 18,000 and service matrix, 6,600, that's all the internet stuff yes. that we see on here. That's, that's our fiber 000. connection, that's right. Okay. So that was my, one of my questions on the line I'm on, because whenever I've asked about the internet, I thought the city used its own and the school used their own. The city has its own network system, but it needs the connection out, so which is provided by so we have our own internal networks yes. here, but then we use their pipeline out. Yes. Yeah, and then for the after-school program, all, you know, it's all the phones are on the internet. Yeah, that's what okay. I yep. wanted to make sure. I mean, I we no did a good questions. job. We dropped it from 60 to 20. So. Any additional comments or questions? So I do want to bring up my property insurance. That's a. $62,000 or $57,000 expense. Is that part of the O&M if they have to carry it? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed your question, Member Pass. Just the same question I had earlier about property insurance. That's why I asked the meaning of the word carry. I got an email from ASIC on the 1819 quotation on the property insurance and the liability insurance. The liability is under our, the school general fund. The 62,000, which right here is only for the worst scenario, that's what I was told, uh, under the property insurance for 1819. And I just, I just don't know. Is that not, I thought they had to carry property insurance. And that's why I'm asking. Um, I don't see. I mean, we're talking $5,000 for the city. It's not a right. huge thing, but. Based on, based on the report that I had about the annual operation of maintenance of budgets that include estimates. You use, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. sorry about that. Um, the annual operations and maintenance budget shall include estimates for all expenses associated with the operation and maintenance of ECCL project, including without limitation insurance required to be maintained under the section 12.1 um, uh, of the ECCL project lease, utilities, water, gas, sewer, le uh, electricity, telecommunication, trash collection, janitorial service, uh, reception and other staff service including management of third party supplies, repairs, non-capital replacement, licenses, fees, assessments, IEP bid, book, uh, bookkeeping, accounting, and audit services associated with the ECCL um, operating account and ECCL replacement reserve account, equipment purchase, and landscape maintenance and contingencies. So that's what, what's taken out of JOA of what's allowed under the O&M. So to his question then, Property insurance, do you cons are we considering that included under the O&M or not? It talks about insurance as far as property insurance. I think it's to be required. To be maintained under 12.1C. <laughs> now we have to go to 12.1. <laughs> One moment. 12.1 subsection C. So many different... Uh, I suspect there's an operating cost member, Pat, so because it's an operating cost that would be included. That's my, if I'm, if I'm answering your I, question. And I, that would have been my assumption as well, yeah. but we specifically say that you carry, and again, I don't know what the word carry means. Oh. Had we not had that the same evening, I would not have thought otherwise. Yeah. So. Can, I, can you just remind me where on the district responsibilities page you've seen the word carries, just so I can reread your, your this? It's a bullet four. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 
And I believe uh, Pedro uh, in, in the draft was just highlighting specific aspects of the JOIs. Yeah, but I, I think I'm finding the nuance in the question. I think it's a good one. I think the question he's asking is, are you independently required to pay for it as opposed to, are you simply required to go out and secure it as the actor who has to secure it? Which is what I asked earlier. Right, I get the question. So I think um, w one of the things that we should do is we should clarify that, because I believe it's district, um, district shall acquire and retain the, like you, you, you have the job of just physically going and getting the insurance. We pay for it together, right? But the, his question is whether the word carries means you independently have to pay for it. Uh, I see. That's the question, and okay. it's a good one. So um, I agree with the superintendent's interpretation that the O&M covers it, but I think you make an excellent point that we need to clarify the word carries, and after hearing your question now, I think we should make that change to that. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I, I, unless, unless we want to give it, unless we want to at a public meeting give the word carries simply the meaning that the district has to simply go acquire it. That's what we mean it to mean. I, I, you know, I didn't put it in there, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I, that's the spirit of it. That's the spirit of what we put with the word. But he, I mean, he raises an excellent point, but it, it, it's not that they carry it independent of us. It's simply that they go and acquire it. Right, and it's at their cost they get it, and then is it allowable yeah. under the O&M? Which yes, I think it's, it's very clear under the O&M. Right. So I, I think, thank you for raising the point, but I think we, I think there's a mutual understanding the word carries means the district just goes and gets it. And then my final but line item question was the, uh, and I ask this every time and I wish I could remember it better, uh, supervisor and admin salaries, whose salary are we paying? I, I don't know if I can you uh, tell us? It will be including the maintenance director and also uh, part of my CBO as overseeing the oh, O&M budget. So a percentage of yours? Yes. So it's an indirect cost, but we're paying the entire uh, maintenance director's budget? Because you guys have three sites. No, but we don't. You, our custodians, the YMCA handles their business. We don't do anything with their sites. We don't do anything with the other places either. So our custodians work here and that's it. Well, I'm not talking about the custodians. I'm talking about your director of facilities. So I mean, I mean I, I'm always weary to pay admin salaries. No, it's a fair question. It's a fair question. I mean, I, I don't I don't know that I could even attribute one percent of his time, honestly, anymore to the other sites. To be honest yeah. with you, yeah, it's a good question. Just seems a large item. It's ten thousand. So yeah. Okay. staff understand that point you know in other words will you look into it well I, I, I can I, I don't know um, I certainly can I don't believe mr. Vos is spending any of his time at the other two sites but I'm, I can look into it sure okay that'd be great yeah I just want to the question there are two line items in the detailed budget for that item one of them is a, a salary listed it does not provide a name of an employee it's all numbers um, 36,732 and the other um, line item is for 100,470. Yeah, so, right. One's the director and one's the, what I'm going to call the inter, sorry. One's the director of maintenance and the other I'm going to call indirect costs to cover the other administrator's salaries. But I just, I, it seems odd to me that we're paying, and, and we'll talk about this all more, but it seems odd to me that we're paying for an administrator they're not doing the repairs, they're just facilitating. That's an administrative cost. So that, so this is not the place to have that conversation, but it just strikes me as odd. Mm -hmm. so. um, uh, this is a question for Dora. Uh, Dora, I'm wondering if you're aware of East Bay Clean Energy, the new CCA that is going to be um, rolling over uh, uh, accounts um, through PG&E. So it's all the energy procurement that's gonna be happening in Alameda County. I sit on that board, so I'm, I'm just highly aware of their activities. And I just wanted to let you know if you're not aware already that there's gonna be a 1.5% discount to the procurement rate for energy, which you might want to um, uh, see as a savings um, for the electric bill. 
because the default rate for all energy procurement for everyone's going to be 1.5% less than PG&E. Okay. All right. So, so, so take a look at it. I don't know if it. So that will affect the difference. electricity and the gas. It won't affect the gas. It's only okay. the electricity. Okay. Member Martinez, is that something we have to apply for? Do you know? No, you're so automatically it? enrolled. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And the phase, I believe you'd be in, I know all municipal accounts happen, are, are rolling over in June, so I believe um, school districts are rolling over at that same time. Everyone else uh, gets captured in the fall. Thanks, thank you. So right now the projected savings about 1.5 percent? Yes, but uh, oh, just, uh, just electricity. Mm -hmm. When you look at the bill, mm -hmm. make sure you're looking at the kilowatt okay. hours. So as I said, this is a very preliminary so budget because the schools, we're still working on developing the budget uh, right now and, ease, and even next month. So if normally, if we're going to see any savings in here when we look at the budget, when we do the first interim or the second interim working budget, we will decrease the budget to reflect what's actually happening. Member Pats. Sorry, looking at my notes. Uh, one more item, and I didn't hear the actual dollar amount for this, but the fix of the doors seems to me not a, it's not a locking issue. It was a design flaw, so I'm not sure why, why that's coming out of the maintenance budget as opposed to just being something. So was that actually an itemized item, or was that just speculation as to one of the things? Because that seemed to be part of the build issue. I don't know if Hannah, and you said it's a line item that speaks to I don't know. I'm asking. Oh, yeah. line, I don't have that paper that that item. Do you know, Ms. Mr. Mayor? What's the, the um, Rex locks for 18,000. I think I'm, I'm only making an assumption that that's what's put under that. I thought the, that the locks are different. This is the gating. Wh know. What category are we looking under? Oh. Uh, Rex, the company did the work. Rex came out and did the work. Yeah. So again, my question is that's not a repair. That's a fixing a design flaw. So what category is this under? Um, I believe it should be 5830. Which is contracted services. Yeah. Who's the who's page the contractor? 25, page twenty five, Rex. And then there's there is also um, wall padding that'll hopefully reduce there's gonna be more wall padding added into the gym to reduce all the holes that we get on an ongoing basis. So that'll hopefully reduce our cost of repairs. Thought that you said that came out of the bond funds. Well let me just ask, is this the one you you emailed me about yes. just earlier? So we are shifting those. We are going to ship those, so those two will be coming out? They'll be coming out, yeah. And I've already emailed you, Mr. Pedro, just okay. so, so you just say so no. Yeah, I mean, I heard you say that earlier. That's not Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 42718, dollars $18, to Rex Lock and Safe to Repair Locks, uh, 15688 to commercial systems for wall padding in the gym on the same day. So yes. those are items that you're saying will shift out of this budget. We're going to, it just came to my attention earlier today. We're going to shift them out. Okay. Because, particularly, uh, uh, cert, most certainly the added mesh for security, I thought was perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. I have one ask for the next time that this budget is presented. Um, two asks. One is, could the staff please report back um, with whether or not there is a cost effective way to make toilets more resilient? Um, because if there is actually, if it would cost us 8000 or 10000 even one time to actually have, some, have the toilets made so that they don't cost the ECCL a lot of money, that'd be great. Um, and then the other thing is, this is an excellent document. Thank you for giving this copy to me. Um, I think that all members of this committee should receive this seven days before this meeting. Because if we all have this, this will reduce questions. It will also inform questions. So this is a very helpful document. But for those who aren't used to working on a budget regularly, mm -hmm. um, having some time to pour over it, look at it, and understand how to match up classification numbers to line items on your overhead sheet mm -hmm. really will make it easier for us. Because when we see big $80,000 differences and we don't understand why, and then you look at it, and it's like 33000 for a major issue, like an HVAC, it, it, and then there's context provided as to why we had children suffering with asthma, we had to make repairs to it due to a natural disaster. That all colors it differently, right? But it gives us narrower questions to ask as opposed to these really open-ended, why is there a $80,000 difference? Well, 33,000 of it is due to something we all dealt with. So I, this is excellent. Just maybe okay. we provide that and then update on toilets. Okay. I just, well, then from now on, I will maybe <laughs> CC the city if I send out that detailed budget report because right now I've been sending it only to Petro 
uh, Ron, and also Brad, then in that case, I, I, I will CC the city also. Pedro. I will make sure it comes. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds like Miss <laughs> Sue is doing it. You need to send that along. You've got six months to wind up to it, just so you know. I appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> Um, I believe we have to approve the mid-year budget. Five, five point three. I believe it's an information item, and we each approve it at our own meetings, right? Yes. Yes. Ah, so it'll be on. I know it's on our consent calendar. Once we've, unless we someone pulls it, it's on our consent calendar in June, I believe, to approve our portion of the budget. So right? this is really just review of. Yeah, these are all these are all all information. What's this then? Oh, we're on six point. Oh no no no, we do have a review. She's right. I'm sorry, I was reading this thing, which looks like the same thing. It is. It is. Yeah, uh, we just noticed that. I did leave that on. Oh, you left them both in the same place. I was looking at this. The appropriate one is six point one. Yeah. So the committee, do we? Does the rules require us to formally approve it as the committee to send it to our our boards? I forget. It does say that it does. Um, Recommends approval, so I think the committee does recommend an approval to. I want a committee. motion to recommend approval to each board. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. Uh, so I believe we've covered 5.3 as well as all of the items under item 6. Is that accurate? We did talk oh. about third party rentals, I guess. Yeah, two, six, two. All right, why don't we move on to 6.2 then? So we, we've covered 5.3 and 6.1, uh, 6.2. Yeah, I, I kind of mentioned earlier, I think uh, we're, we are um, receiving demand and, and our revenues have been increasing. Um, we do have fees uh, that are gonna be going up by CPI uh, that'll be recommended to city council for approval. Um, in a June meeting, so that'll help also increase our, our revenue uh, for facility rentals. Um, we estimate, actually, we, when I estimated 275 just the other day, um, we received that day later on, I found out uh, an $8,000 payment, so I think it might even be higher than 275 that we actually get. So, um, you know, I try to be more conservative than really putting out the numbers just because um, we don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those as things go on. So we're hoping to continue that and that we can also do it again next year. Um, and I think as a number for next year, I wouldn't go with what we get because you can lose. We have uh, two big church groups that currently are renting out a lot of days and time. So if one of those go out, then we would lose a lot of revenue. So, and also the big thing that we have to do is make sure we can maintain the facilities where um, as we're showing them and we get uh, renters or potential renters that they still want to rent out the facilities. So that's gonna be important that we can maintain the, the the service and quality of the centers and so that'll be important to kind of revisit and see if we have enough manpower that we might need to add some additional costs of um, custodial or janitorial and some other things that might need to be considered as a cost as we go along just because the wear and tear we're seven days a week that we're operating uh, this complex um, you know if, if you looked at the gym right now we have a big uh, tournament group that's been coming through I think probably t uh, 300 to 500 people Saturday and Sunday right now on top of the field, on top of building A, and on top of building C um, that are happening on Saturday and Sunday. So there's a lot of use going on. That's, that's getting us the $275,000 that we're projecting right now. Any public comment? Seeing none, any discussion uh, by the committee? Uh, Member Merriam? Pedro, I got a quick question. Is there any way that we can increase uh, fees on our facilities within a timely fashion or in a, an incremental uh, rate? Has has the budget ref does the budget reflect uh, annual increases or has it been a flat rate since we've opened? Um, so uh, the way we have our fees set up for the city is a master fee schedule, and they normally go once a year, but they can go at any time if we feel that there's a need to increase fees or another fee to be added um, to recommend in the public hearing? Uh, that may be something that we could explore because that would help 
offset our, our, our expenditures. So if we can increase, you know, nothing too horribly, but uh, something that would, you know, bang for the buck. Okay. We can look at that. Any additional comment? I think we should kind of be a little bit careful with that. Um, I'm here on the weekend with different organizations that rent the facilities and pretty much as long-term rentals. And if you increase the fees, it might chase some of them away because the fees, when it's long-term, would um, really be kind of a hike. Plus, I rent the facilities myself sometime. I will say that I'm one of the things you. we do have with uh, a lot of the third-party rentals is we actually do bring in third um, outside vendors to do additional cleaning. So we do have another vendor that's doing janitor that we're doing, bringing in afterwards, especially on the weekends, to make sure it's ready to go the following day, since we only get service five days a week during the, the um, uh, Monday through Friday right now, the main services. All right, uh, why don't we move on to item 6.3. And that is update from administrative committee uh, from EUSD and the city. Dr. Rubio, is that you? Or? Um, I don't think I have anything to update uh, the committee on other than what's been discussed this evening. I just wanna say, um, I believe this is my last city schools committee <laughs> meeting and I wish you all the best and um, enjoyed the toilet and other <laughs> conversations <laughs> and I will remember that when people ask me about Emeryville no, I'm kidding. Uh, I just uh, I, honestly uh, it's been a real pleasure uh, and uh, I wish everybody the best and I'm sure that you will all do a great things continuing on with ECCL so thank you, thank you yeah. ditto for me <laughs> <laughs> same perspective on toilets same perspective. okay yes. <laughs> yeah. If it's not on the agenda in November, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> Make a big note on that. Uh, Member Collins. So I just want to take a moment to thank both of you for your service to this committee. Thank you, Brenda. All right, why don't we move on to item seven, future agenda items. And is that affected at all by our uh, <laughs> item, what was it 4.2 of the? This is the appropriate time. Yeah, you can make a request to the to administrative staff, and at that point, then the, somebody can make a request, right? And technically, it can it will be re sent to they you. Could make it, they could make they it. can make it now, now or later. Or, it's fine. Or later. Right. Yeah. I have a request. I'd like to um, see a little more information about the, and this is from the city side as well as the school side, uh, the after school program. As, uh, like a statistical update? Uh, like an informational what, item? What, what is offered through the program, mm -hmm. uh, statistics, mm -hmm. uh, budgeting, whatever you can bring to the table that could be in, uh, a little more information. Okay, am I, the, am the, I not clear? No, 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 you're clear. The, um, We'll, we'll, we'll talk, we'll work about that. That's a request. We are not supposed to talk about an unagenda item, so. Wait, say it again. We can't discuss it because it's not on the agenda, but the, the format we just set up, we will discuss the request about putting it on the okay. agenda. Thank you. Anything else? All right, uh, item eight, announcements and member comments. I just want to thank the school board and the superintendent for working so closely with the city council um, to resolve all our issues related to property taxes and the PBID. And your partnership is greatly appreciated. And um, I know that the folks at the TMA were um, very pleasantly surprised and happy to hear about that. And I look forward to assisting the school in um, trying to find ways to have the Emory go around and service the school better. All right, I believe we're at item nine, adjournment. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.